Hi YouTube and welcome back to my random thoughts on Thursdays. This time I'm talking about being offended. Okay, so I think the culture of political correctness in this country um, has gotten so out of hand that it's just starting to piss me off. So I finally have something to, to, to vlog about again because of that. But anyway, um, it, it's just like you can't say or do anything in this country without someone saying, oh, well, I'm offended by that or that's so racist and this and that and the other. And I'm like, people are taking things way out of control. They are taking little mount, little molehills and making mountains out of them. I mean, to the to the nth degree at this point, that it's just getting absolutely ridiculous. I can give you two examples um, of things that that recently have really, really started to piss me off. Um, one, we have a restaurant opening up in our town. There's already three others in our state, and no one's had a problem with with the name up until they tried to open up in our town. There, there. The other three locations are in another town, in other, in two other towns, and um, the the restaurant is is well known. It's famous. Everyone was really looking forward to this restaurant opening, and now all of a sudden, there's this small group of people who are saying, "Well, we find the name offensive, so can you please change it?" I mean, literally, this is what's happening. So the name of the restaurant is called Illegal Pete's. Okay. The history behind the name, one, the owner's name is Pete, and also his dad is named Pete, and so it was kind of like a, an homage to his dad a little bit. But then also there's apparently there's a book, um, I forget the name of the title of the book, but there's a book that he and his dad really loved, and within the book there was um, a restaurant named Illegal Pete's as well. So that's kind of where they, they got the idea of the name from. And um, the illegal part of the name is kind of a little bit of a wink and a nod to the counterculture of the 60s, where the owner um, who, who came up with this restaurant, he's, he's, he's from the 60s, he's a baby boomer. And so um, that's kind of the origin of the name. Nothing offensive about that. You know, a little wink and a nod to the counterculture, you know, naming it after his dad, you know, referencing a favorite book of theirs. What could be possibly offensive about that? Not to mention it's a popular restaurant. Um, the other three locations are very well known. Lots of people in our town were really excited about getting a location here so we didn't have to drive so far to get to one. And then this group of people comes up and says, you know what, you really need to change the name because the I word is offensive to our Mexican brethren who live here. Literally, this is what's going on, is that there are people in this town who think that the word illegal, which they're now referring to as the I word, is an offensive word against Mexican immigrants. Um, first of all, the restaurant has nothing to do, I mean, okay, I, I will say this, they are a Mexican restaurant, they serve Mexican food, um, or Tex-Mex or whatever, like American style Mexican food, I mean the owner is not Mexican. But he happens to love Mexican food and he's made a Mexican restaurant. But, you know, uh, it has nothing to do, the, the, the fact that they make Mexican food has nothing to do with the name itself. The name has its own origin, which I just told you. And so, um, it, it, again, it's, it's not like he named it Illegal Pedro's or anything where it was really trying to imply illegal you know, immigrants. Not to mention he, he started this chain decades ago before the whole illegal immigration thing was even an issue. So it has nothing to do with that. It's not a reference to that, but all of a sudden these people are like, oh, we feel offended by the I word. And so you need to change the name of your restaurant so that we won't feel offended. You know what? If you're so freaking offended, don't eat there. You, okay. And this is a point made by Stephen Fry, um, the, the, the actor or comedian Stephen Fry, is that p so many people out there think that by being offended gives them some sort of rights. Like all of a sudden, I'm so offended, you have to change what you're doing because it's, it's, it's my right to tell you to change because you're offending me. I'm sorry, but no, they don't. It's just ridiculous. 
I mean, they're 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 going after a private business now. Obviously, if this was a government-run thing, like all of a sudden, you know, we changed the uh, the, the immigration services to illegal immigrant deportation, or you know, if if the government did something like that, okay, yes, you know, you have a right to to, to protest against that. That's a, that's a public entity; tax dollars are paying for it. You have every right to go in and, and protest and everything. And well. I mean, do you have a right to protest against this restaurant's name? Yes, but the way you protest, okay, you can say, hey, that's offensive, I'm not going to eat there. That's how you protest the name of a restaurant. If if it's really that offensive to you, just don't eat there. Don't just go around and start, you know, bullying the restaurant owner into forcing them to change their name. Like, we want to eat there, but we won't because of the name, so you have to change it. No, just don't eat there. There's plenty of other Mexican restaurants in our city. Just go to somewhere where the name isn't offensive to you. Simple. Um, I think I'm going to go to this restaurant on pure principle because of the name now. I've never even been to an uh, illegal pizza. I'm going to go to this one just because. Uh, I hope he doesn't change I hope the owner doesn't change the name because it's just like... Don't get bullied into changing the name because it's just ridiculous. Um, another issue. So the other day, I had, I had, this has ended up being a huge fight on Facebook for me, and I ended up unfriending a bunch of people because I just, I've had it with these, with these people, because they're just, the blinders, seriously, are, are on their faces and just not willing to, to let go of certain things. I asked a simple question, what I thought was a fairly innocent question. How is it considered discriminatory to ask for a photo identification when someone comes to vote. Okay. Now, I'm not implying voter fraud. Okay. I, I wasn't talking about voter fraud. I, I didn't even want to get into that side of the topic. My whole point is that, look, you need a photo ID f when you apply for a job. Uh, they want to make sure that you are who you say you are when you apply for the job. Uh, you need a photo ID to collect unemployment if you don't have a job or to collect welfare um, if you're that badly off. They still require a photo ID for you, for you to pick up your check. You generally need a photo ID to rent an apartment, to rent a car, to drive a car, to um, have a mortgage, to open a bank account. There's so many things in this country that you cannot do without photo identification. Are all of those things discriminatory? The whole thing is it's discriminatory against the poor because they don't have the money or the time to go to the DMV to get a state photo ID. Because you, you don't necessarily have to have a driver's license. You can just get a state-issued photo ID. But, oh, you know, it, the, the $20 and the two hours it takes to go down to the DMV is such a hardship for them. You know what? Bullshit. I call bullshit because I was in that situation, okay? I came from a very poor background. There were times we didn't have food to eat on the table, and my grandmother had to make us uh, a pot of, of her version of gruel, basically, just to feed me. And there were times when we didn't even have that in the house and I had to go to bed hungry. Um, if I didn't work three jobs on top of getting government assistance to go to college, I wouldn't have had a college education. And I, I will say I was very grateful for that assistance. Um, but, you know, I was poor. I was like, you know, working, working, um, you know, minimum wage jobs. And back then, minimum wage was $3.85 an hour. Um, later on, it was $4.25 an hour. Oh, big raise. Um, <laughs> so I know what it means to be poor. And guess what? I still went down to the DMV and got my photo ID. Why? Because it was required. Let's see, I needed it, one, I needed a bank account. Um, I needed jobs, I needed work. Um, to go to college, uh, when I first applied, I had to give a photo ID before I could get a student ID. Um, you see where I'm going with it. It's like, I needed the photo identification in order to live my life. So I called my ass down to the DMV and I got the damn thing. I mean, I had to do it, like, it was, I, they were open until 9 o'clock at night, I think, and I went down at, like, 7, and I got, I got the ID just before they shut down or something. Um, it was, like, between, between jobs that I had to do this in, but you know what? I got it. 
okay? It happens that people are poor, but you can still go and get a freaking photo ID. It was not a hardship for me because I was poor. The other argument is it's a hardship against women. Really? Because of when we get married and we have to change our name and it's such a hassle to get a new um, driver's license or a photo ID in our new name. Uh, no, it's not. Um, you know, obviously, I need to get it. I needed to get a new social security card first. And you know what? You have to do that. If you change your name, you have to get a new social security card in your new name. It's kind of a legal requirement. And right after my husband and I got married, we kind of did the courthouse thing. I just went over to the social security office and filled out the paperwork and did it. I mean, big deal. Didn't even cost anything. And then um, a week or so, I think I had to. I had to wait. I forget how long I had to wait, but I had to wait some time before the social security database was updated. And once that was updated, then I just went down to the DMV with my old ID and my marriage certificate, which, you know, I got a copy of when I was at the courthouse because, duh. And I got a new driver's license with my new name on it. It's not that hard, people. It really isn't. And it's not discriminatory. And you know what? I, I again call bullshit because the whole name change, that is a choice. Women don't have to legally change their last name when they get married. There's no legal requirement. So it's a choice. If you choose to change your name to your husband's last name, and in my case I hyphenated, um, then that was my choice. It was my choice, so I had to go do that. If I didn't want to have to change my name on my social security card and my driver's license and stuff, I could have just not done that. I could have just not made a name change simple you know it's just it's it's a choice it's not discriminatory and then of course there's always the oh it's discriminatory against minorities I, I, the same argument for the poor people I'm sorry but you know uh, why no how I mean if we require a photo ID at voting we require it for everybody regardless of the tone of your skin so if now if the requirement was for only people with um this shade or darker brown on their skin yes that would be discriminatory but no they're requiring the photo id for everybody or at least that's what they're trying to do that's what they're trying to implement it's not currently required but that's what they're trying to do is you got it required from everybody that's not discriminatory against minorities because they're part of everybody so, okay, so that's my thing is like, okay, you need photo IDs just to live your life in this country. And I call bullshit on the whole, on, on, the, on the three arguments about it's discriminatory against the poor, women, minorities, etc. I just, you know, no, it's just, I think being able to verify that the right person is, is coming to vote and not voting for somebody else because grandma down the street's sick or something. Um, sorry, grandma needs to come in to vote. It, it, it is what it is. Or, you know, a, a lot of places are now doing mail-in ballots. I do the mail-in ballot. I'm on a permanent mail-in ballot. They mail me the ballot, I fill it out, I mail it back. Boom. Um, that's a great way to get around. I mean, you need the photo ID, I think, when you first... Well, no, because I did everything. I actually filled everything out on the line. So you didn't even need a photo ID for that part. Um, I think they verify your information in other ways. So if you want to get around that, if, you're, uh, if your uh, county allows uh, mail-in ballots and stuff, just do that. You know, um, with the internet and more and more things going online, there's going to be more and more opportunities to do things without, you know, even requiring that photo ID. But it's handy to have when you have to go in person somewhere and prove where you are. Like, I don't know, flying an airplane. If you want to fly an airplane, you need a photo ID. They won't let you go through security without one. Shocking. Is that discriminatory against the poor? Well, can they even afford to fly? And that's not being mean or anything, but when when my when when I was a child, my family didn't have money to fly anywhere. It was expensive. That was for people with more money, and it wasn't necessarily a discriminatory thing, it was just that was the cost that the airline had to charge. You know, are people going to start being offended by airline prices and say, well, that's discriminatory against the poor. You guys need to lower your prices for the poor people. No. 
it's just, this is just, it's spiraling out of control to the point where it's just absolutely getting ridiculous. It's impacting private businesses. It's, it's impacting just the normal process of everyday society at this point. Um, with everyone whining about being offended about this and that and the other and, and, and getting overly sensitive about racial things. I'm sorry, but just because I happen to be talking about someone and I describe them as a cute Asian guy, all of a sudden people say, oh, that's racist because you said Asian. I'm like, no, I was describing him. You know, I mean, should I describe straight black hair with a yellowish tinge to his skin and slit eyes and, you know, well, that would be racist too, wouldn't it? You know, it's like, oh, he's just a cute guy. That Why can't you just say he was a cute guy? You know, and, you know, it, depending on the context of things, perhaps his features were important to point out. Because, like, this is why he was cute, because he was Asian. That's why he was cute. Um, you know, is that a racist comment? No. Um, that's not even a stereotypical comment, because most of the time the stereotype is the cute Asian girls. So there. Um, <laughs> It's just, it's, you know, and, and real quick, uh, definition of racism is when one person or a group of people of a certain skin tone um, happen to f feel that they are superior to another group that has a different skin tone and therefore does things to, to, to impose their will on, on the other people and, 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 and push them down and not allow them equal access to things in society. That's racism, okay? That's what we fought against, uh, not we, uh, I, I shouldn't say we because I wasn't even alive yet, but like Martin Luther King and people like that, that's what they were fighting against, was, you know, ha not having the separate water fountains and, and being able to be hired for the same jobs and that kind of thing. That's what we were fighting against. I keep saying we, sorry, but you know, just the, the general we, not me as part of the we. Um, but that's what was being fight, fought against. And the fact that, um, like here, another example, a gal for, um, I think it was for Halloween, it was, no, it was for a, for a convention, it was a sci-fi convention. And she was from Germany and she went to the convention dressed as her favorite character from a sci-fi series. I forget which series it was, but the character happened to be played by an actress of African-American origin. Is that as PC as I can get with that? And she's German. So she darkened her skin and put on a wig to look like her favorite character because it's her favorite character. How is that racist? She wasn't doing blackface, okay? Everyone's accusing her of blackface. That wasn't blackface, okay? Look up blackface on Google, seriously. Blackface was doing a caricature of what people thought an African was like, or an African American was like, back in the, I don't know, 1920s, 1930s, where they would literally black their face. I mean, not brown, not tan, whatever. It was literally pitch black with big red lips, because they would try to imitate like the, the, the larger, more puffy, uh, lips, which actually everyone thinks is sexy now. People are getting collagen injections to, to, to look like nowadays. But they would just paint big red lips on their on their face and, and, and wear these, you know, ratty looking clothes and just kind of pretend to be completely stupid um, because that was their perception of black people in those days and that was what was considered funny. Um, they would make fun of, of, of black people by that, by doing that. And yes, that is an offensive thing to do. That is blackface, okay? Someone turning their skin brown and putting on a, a braided wig to emulate their favorite TV character is not racism. Not in the slightest. And I wish people would get off their freaking high horses and, and the, the thing is, the most of the people who were accusing her of this blackface racism stuff were white people. It wasn't even other black people, it was white people. Because they're so like, you know, oh, oh no, we're gonna be seen as evil monsters because she's dressing up like, no! Ugh. Will you guys just get your heads out of your asses? And get some freaking common sense and actually educate yourself on this stuff before you start accusing people of things. Ugh. 
anyway, so I think that's enough of a rant for today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Sorry I haven't been posting as much. You know, as I've been saying, I'm really busy and I'm taking on yet another client, so I'm going to be even busier. I mean, I'm probably going to be pushing 60 to 80 hours of work a week right now, but I need the cash because I was so not busy for a long time. <laughs> so I'm just taking on more work to, to kind of kind of hoard some cash so that I can make it through the next slump when it happens and pay off some debt. Uh, you know, put some money aside for retirement, which I haven't been doing, just like all sorts of stuff. So anyway, that's one of the reasons I haven't been filming as much, so I apologize. But thank you so much for joining. If you do enjoy these, uh, these, these rants of mine, <laughs> uh, please thumbs up, please share. Um, I want more eyeballs on my videos, please. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>